Hi guys, John here from the John D. Jones YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to plan your project and how to split your design into EpiServer templates and blocks. Now EpiServer definitely keeps life interesting as a web designer developer because let's say we're creating a bog standard web website, you'll get the designer, the UX guy, whoever's doing it, they'll come up and they'll say we need to build a home page, a landing page, a contact page. Now. On a normal project, that's really simple. You'll create a home page, for example. You'll create a task in Jira. I'm assuming you're using Jira or an agile process. That will then be given to a developer. He'll go tippy tappy away, do a bit of coding. He'd say it's ready. Pass it on to the testing team. Testers will, you know, give it a test, yes or no. Boom. Process done. Life's simple. EpiServer though. EpiServer isn't that simple. Now the problem with EpiServer is. It does templates and it does blocks. Now, this is obviously for me. I really like templates and blocks. Uh, it definitely makes you know more flexible layouts. It's one of you know EpiServer's sort of strongest points as CMS. It's the thing which makes it stand out compared to some of its competitors. But it makes a bit of a bitch when it comes to project planning. Now, what I mean is, say we've got a home page now. But on our home page, we've got three reusable blocks. Now, in this example, um, at the top of the block at the top of the page we've got a carousel now our carousel is a block and our carousel needs to be used throughout the site so let's say we've got a home page template a landing page template we've got a product template now when we come to try and plan out our project life becomes a bit difficult because we can't just have you know a home page card anymore to give to someone in Jira and then you know the developer works on it, it goes to testing because what happens to the carousel block? If the tester tests the carousel block just against the home page, that doesn't necessarily mean it's past testing. So then that sort of poses the question: do we not test any of the blocks until the end of the process? So you know, we create a block, we create a template, and then we just you know put it in the to test column and it just sits around and you know you can never really clears the sprint or you can't really get rid of it because you need to test it against all the other things. I mean another approach is you know you potentially at the beginning of the project if you can you define all your templates and then you potentially do them first and then you concentrate on doing the blocks afterwards. But as you can see when we work with EpiServer life's not really just as simple anymore as just you know a simple here's a page here's a Jira task developer works on it and then you know we test it now obviously there isn't a right or wrong answer to this sorry if you're expecting some magic answer um, a lot of people in my life expected me to come up with something what I can say to you is it all depends on you know the level of experience um, in a lot of cases you might have a very bossy project manager and the project manager might go oh no we need to do this one of the um, interesting aspects of my life as a contractor I tend to work on a lot of clients now if I'm working for a digital agency digital agencies do this thing day in day out they've got their processes you know locked up tight sweet when you go in like client side so you're working with people who aren't used to making websites generally they struggle a lot more um, in life you know you have your developers developers normally get blocks most people watching this will be developers so you know we're the clever ones of the team then you've got you know your business people your project managers your business analysts you know your stakeholders and for people new to EpiServer they just struggle to get their heads around you know what a block is completely and then when it comes to you know trying to plan your project out split up your agile process prioritize tasks it's just their brain just completely blows up in most cases now a lot of these people they're clever people don't get me wrong people I work with I think you know on the whole everyone's you know quite good know what they're talking about knowledgeable people but CMS projects are you know a different beast onto their own and when you work on a CMS project it is slightly different so if you're sort of new to this what I recommend is you know first don't try and reinvent the wheel too much um, my advice to you know most clients or most people new to CMS projects is there's digital agencies they do this day in day out 
they pretty much solve this problem, just, you know, copy their process. So you may be asking, what the hell does their process look like? Right, what we'll do is we'll sort of, I say classic, but you know, I'll take you through a classic sort of agency process. I think in my life I probably work with seven or eight agencies now. Um, two or three of those have been in the top 50 biggest sort of ones in the UK. And there's generally a sort of a general theme or general process. So what we do is we start off with, you know, client going, I've got a big bag of cash. I want to spend all this cash. Someone design me a website. We go, sweet, we're going to build you this website. And we get a designer involved, a UX guy. One of those guys or two of those guys or a big team of people. And I have worked on projects where the UX team have actually spent all the budget for the project. What they do is go out, figure out, you know, what we, you know, what the website should do, how it can convert, how it can make money, what it should look like. A designer will then design a set of PSD files. Now, hopefully this isn't, you know, anything groundbreaking or shocking. Then what I advise anyone to do is get the PSDs and then sit down and then try and figure out what components you want to build. Now you don't have to figure out the ins and outs, every minute little de like detail of these like, components. What you basically want to do is just create a rough sketch of you know, the templates you want and the blocks you're going to create. My general process of doing this is, say we have 10 PSDs, I go through each PSD, see which one's reusable, see which isn't reusable. I mean, in a general project, I'm saying, you know, your general template is going to be things like homepage, contact us page. Generally, you have a, you know, a standard page or generic page, call it what you want. A landing page is another common one. Um, a listing page is also another pretty common one. 404 page, that's a often sort of overlooked one, but you'll need one. So after we sort of go through this process, you'll hopefully have like a list of, you know, on probably the minimum 10, on the biggest projects I've been on, maybe 50. You'll have 50 templates. Now, once you define these templates, you can go through and then figure out which components you want to be reusable on multiple pages. This is how you come up with your blocks. Now, my general advice is at the beginning of the project, try and be more template heavy than block heavy. Some people don't want that. Some clients just want to create, you know, an amazing flexible sort of uh, pages. But what I can tell you is the more you go down the block route, the harder and longer it is for content editors to create pages. So it's all very good saying there's going to be one template and then everything else is going to be a block. But when it comes to actually, you know, the dog's bodies who are going to be coming in, adding in the content, they're not going to be that happy. So generally, try and stick with templates and then try to keep a minimum of blocks. Some people might not agree with that, but you can always, you know, as the project evolves, as you go through iterations, you can start, you know, chipping away and making some of your templates or, you know, into more reusable components if you need to. So now you've got your list of templates and hopefully you've got a list of blocks. Now, when it comes to project planning, what I generally tend to sort of recommend is that you know that is your backlog um, I've worked with a few people who you know are used to sort of more web page concepts and they try and you know say right we're gonna test or we're gonna create an epic for the home page and the home page is gonna contain the home page template and it's gonna contain these five blocks which can then appear on other pages now the problem if you go with like a paid sort of base process in your planning is that you're always going to have these cards sort of lingering around. Let's say you have a content area on your homepage, which is, you know, unrestricted and any content editor can drag any block. In reality, if you're going through this process, that means you can't really test your homepage until the end because you won't know your homepage works unless you can actually test every single block variation on it. Now, obviously, that's not the best process in the world, what happens in those sort of posts, like what happens then is you just end up having all these big epics sat around in your sprints, nothing ever gets closed off. Now on the flip side, you can't just sort of go, all right, we, well, you can. Um, you can't just, you could get your blocks potentially and say, all right, here's my block, and then I'm not gonna test my block until every template's ready that it needs to appear on. 
Now this is definitely one approach you could take. Um, when you're starting your sort of project, you could just tackle all your templates first, and then as soon as you've got your templates, you can start developing your blocks. So that means that, you know, say the first month or two, you're creating, you know, in most cases, there'll be sort of quite basic templates. So, you know, homepage, contact us page, all those good stuff, but they won't really have any blocks. Go, do you do all of those? get all those through testing and then once they've all gone through testing you start in doing your blocks so at this stage say we've got our rich text block which text block you then go right well then that's we'll create a task for that it goes to the developer he says it's ready for testing testers then can put it on home page landing page and as soon as it's been on all pages tick off you go now that's probably one of the better ways of going about it that's the way that I'd probably recommend you going about it um, the other way that I tend to sort of approach like project planning is you sort of focus on MVPs. So say you need to create a minimum, it doesn't need to be the MVP of what you're actually delivering, but say you create um, or you have an agreement with the business owners, stakeholders, whoever, there's like a million people nowadays. What you do basically is you say, right, what we're going to do is we're going to get the team to focus on the home page, um, say like the news hub page and the news item page. And what we're going to do is we're just, forget all about the generic blocks. What we're going to do is just create the minimum amount of, you know, pay templates and blocks so that we can sign that off in a chunk. So then what you can do is work on that chunk as a team, put that into sprints. And then when you finish that chunk, you pass it over to testing and then test, testing basically just batters, you know, those couple of pages, they start putting blocks on a few different variations. I found this approach generally works quite well because you can start putting real content in, you get a feel of the site. But out of sort of, you know, all these sort of ways and different like techniques, they're the two ones that I'd probably, you know, recommend that you sort of think about. So either MVP approach where, you know, you bottle up a load or you design all your templates first and then your blocks. Now granted the template block route isn't always possible. Um, some companies don't want to do that. The MVP route is generally easier. The thing I definitely don't recommend is just doing a free for all. Now I don't want to admit that you know I've worked for companies who do this but in a free for all People just work on anything whenever they feel like it. You'll have an analyst, you know, looking into one card, so you'll do that, then you'll do something else. And what happens is you just generally don't focus on anything and then you end up with this massive mess. Things are constantly changing, you constantly have to retest and you just waste so much time and effort. So it's definitely worth, you know, trying to control, you know, your deliverable through the project. And because as I said, EpiServer makes it so much harder because you're using blocks that it's really worth sitting down at the beginning of the process and really thinking and agreeing with the team how blocks can get tested in your project. I mean as soon as you've got that sort of cracks and you've got everyone happy on the project, life's pretty much sweet. After that, you know, the same as most development, as long as you've got like the planning and you know the planning and you're know, coming up with like the white idea that's sort of 90% of the hard bit and then the implementation bit should then hopefully be really easy for you anyway I hope my bad billings sort of uh, help someone out there I've been doing this for about 12 years and I can say that you know I've definitely tried a few approaches some have worked some haven't I've definitely worked with a number of different clients and it's very noticeable about how smoothly a project goes um, based on you know how much experience they have building websites anyway obviously because this is YouTube um, if you think I'm a bit of a dick you think this is useful or you just need some clarification on anything please leave a comment um, obviously again it's on YouTube there should be a big subscribe button there if you like this sort of stuff you want to learn about EpiServer or CMS development you just think I'm a sexy beast and you want to check me out subscribe away Otherwise, I've got a website, it's johndjones.com, that's J-O-N-D-J-O-N-E-S.com. On there, there's about 800 tutorials, um, many about EpiServer. If you want to learn an EpiServer or you have a problem with EpiServer, you want to learn .NET development or you just need some career advice, head over there. Anyway, until next time.